Ezreal's sexy abs. That's all I got for you. No, I mean, like, the last time we played, not, like, what happened in this Oh, I still have zero clue. But where do you want to go, buddy? Um, I'm going to return to find something. Oh, yeah, we're getting food, cake stuff, cake supplies. Yeah. Oh, yep. Zach's um, big-brained. All right, we're, we're two first, so, I guess. I say we go to the clubhouse. I mean, I believe the order was infirmary, library, clubhouse, but it, I don't think it actually matters, so clubhouse. Felix, I've gone, feels like I've gone through more things today than all the previous days combined. <clears throat> Thus, approaching the clubhouse, I'd even forgotten to think about how awkward it must be to look for sugar there. Oh well, yeah, because that makes sense. Huh. Look at them robot titties. Mm. Shuriken and Electronic were... Or, oh, wait. Ezreal were enthusiastically building something. They were so busy that they didn't even notice me. I looked closely. It was some kind of reboot, or at least the body of one. Moreover, this reboot was female and had animal ears. The cat chick! Oh my gosh. It's a robot. What? I don't want to hit that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to make it's a... It's Aether. It's Aether. I didn't want to make up theories about purpose of such a device for luminar luminaries of camp cybernetics. Even though the design looked practically workable, I had my doubts about this robot ever being able to conquer Earth, or at least being able to do anything on its own. But they seemed to enjoy the process, so, you know, more power to ya. And that was something we shared, even though I didn't want to admit it. On the other hand, they weren't afraid of possible failure, criticism, or jokes. They were working towards their goal without paying attention to others. Who would call it unrealistic or even absurd? Oh, it looks like I'm truly comparing them to luminaries of the sciences. Hey, guys. I greeted them uncertainly. Oh, I keep forgetting that's me. Oh, it's Jimmy. Come in. Whoa, it's good to see you. I was, I was actually already inside. You know, sorry for what happened yesterday. I barely remember anything, but, well, uh... Never mind, it's okay. And what brings you to a humble abode? Ezra looked at me, slyly. Sometimes I feel that he makes such a face when he knows something about the other person. Something he can use in a right moment. Sugar. I need sugar. An image from an ancient video game suddenly came into my mind, where some kind of unit, like a builder or something, cried out with all of its five-pixel stature, GOLD! WE NEED MORE GOLD! We got it, said Ezreal calmly. Why would you want it? I felt that I shouldn't explain to Shariq that they wanted to bake a cake for him. I shouldn't spoil the surprise. Uh, I don't know. Olga Dmitrievna told me to get some. Okay, hang on. Ezreal disappeared behind the door into the next room. And why do you have sugar here? Or why not in the canteen? When the food truck came that time, it was the last thing you know. And given that our building is the closest one to the entrance, they decided they would hear such a effort. That's reasonable, isn't it? The door opened, revealing Ezreal hauling a huge bag behind him. I really don't know what the size of the cake will be, but that was obviously too much sugar. Well, thanks, but I don't need it all. But where would we put it? Back where you got it? Why is he, why is he so surprised? <laughs> Ezreal gave me a surprised look. You don't want the whole bag? <laughs> <laughs> We don't have a place for it. So you... you asked for sugar, so take it. It seems that that previous smile of his wasn't there without a reason. Maybe you'll help me then? It's not that far to carry. We're busy. He pointed his hand at the reboot. I gazed at Shariq. He owed me after all. He hesitated and then looked away in shame. I sighed, took the bag, and headed to the floor, to the door, not the floor. Thanks anyway. Picks it up, it's so heavy, he just falls. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I, s I said at parting, exerting myself. But it didn't make it too far. Just after a mere 20 mitres, I had to put the bag down to have it rest. Wow, we are really weak. <laughs> I had no idea how much it weighed, but it felt like more than 20 kilos. On the other hand, it was just 200 mitres to the canteen. On the other other hand, even such a distance with this payload on my shoulder, or alternative in my hands, around my legs, or under my arm, or even on my head. On his, on his legs? <laughs> okay. <laughs> How the fuck is he gonna do that? Maybe he puts him in between his legs and just walks like that. <laughs> wow. This guy's a goddamn genius. <laughs> 50 pound bag of sugar. He's gonna, just he's gonna penguin walk. <laughs> <laughs> he's getting those adductor muscles up, dude. It looked impossible for me to cover. And as I resigned myself to move in minor sprints with prolonged pauses between them, so I could get there by night at least, I heard a voice behind me. Maybe I could help you. I saw Lena in front of me. I don't think you can. It was one of those moments when I felt pain when it felt when I felt painfully how dramatically I was out of shape. It's interesting. I can bring a hand cart. A hand cart? Why didn't I think of that myself? Yes, that would be great. Wait here, I'll be right back. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> she smiled and ran in the direction of the square. She was laughing at us. <laughs> What would I do without her? Penguin walked your way with some shaker. <laughs> it's good that Lena isn't always that shy and can take the initiative sometimes. I started to think for hours. She seemed quite unusual now. <coughs> With no trace of shyness on her face and actually the complete opposite. Smiles and confidence. The offer of help wasn't something extraordinary by itself, but getting it from Lena? Blink. A few minutes later, she came back with a smallish handcart. Put the bag down on it. Thanks. Don't mention it. She blushed and looked down. Oh, the Lena we all know is back. So, I'll go then. Yeah, see you. <laughs> and thank you again. I shouted after her. Sometimes I felt like there are two different people living inside of Lena. But the second one, confident, happy, and sometimes even bold, only appears when she talks to me. Or am I making things up again? I thought that it would be better if I get all the ingredients at once, so I headed to Olga Dmitrievna's cabin with the handcart. What? Okay. Wait, he... Uh, are we storing it at our cabin? Uh... <laughs> Who cares? Which <laughs> one? <laughs> To the library. No. Oh. If every other place on, on the cake ingredient list made at least some sense to me, then the flower from the library made none. I thought hard about who would put it in the library and why, but couldn't find any sane explanation after all. Given Pinata's harsh nature, I'd better knock first. Nothing. What? <laughs> I don't know if that was for. I don't know if that was worse. She wasted. <laughs> <laughs> <Alan. laughs> I had to cough at the same time as I tried to stay home. So it just came out as all one sound. <laughs> Siesta peered at me closely from behind her glasses. What thing you want? Um. Don't think anything weird, but I need... I didn't want to look like an idiot and decided to explain things carefully. I need some flour. Olga Dmitrievna said that is here. I understand that sounds strange to keep the flour in the library, but... I was sent to you, and it's needed for a cake to celebrate Shariq's rescue. Yes, I have the flour. What's so strange about that? Then you will play with surprise. At that second, I felt like I'd been hit on the head with a heavy weight and lost the ability to understand anything at all. Flower in the library? Sure, what's so strange about it? <laughs> We're in Wonderland. I'm Alice. Now I'm gonna eat that magic mushroom and I'll be back home. Hey. Ah, yeah? 
I was daydreaming. <coughs> Wait here. Let me get right back. She disappeared behind the bookshelves while I folded my hands and started waiting. My well, least favorite voice. I don't know why I gave it to her. <laughs> a moment later, the sound of a door trap groaning on its hinges reached me. Hey, do you need some help? I inquired loudly. I don't deal with it. Zenya barked out to me. She came to me in the basement, so I have to wait a little later. Okie dokie. Blink. A few minutes passed, but Zenya still hadn't returned. I was starting to get worried when the door was suddenly flung open and Eliza came into the library. She looked surprised too, seeing me here. Oh, she hasn't she hasn't had that like that in a while. I wonder if Olga hasn't seen her yet. What are you doing here? Am I not allowed to be here? I said rudely to her. Eliza was clearly a bit overwhelmed. Oh, what do I care? She snorted and headed to Zenya's table. Why are you here, then? Eliza measured me with her eyes carefully and almost opened the, m the mouth to say something, but then seemed to change her mind and turned away, hiding her hands behind her back. Returning a book? I blurted the first thing off the top of my head. It's none of your business. She replied with a hint of hesitation. What book is it? Eliza was silent. Oh, come on, let me see it. I wonder what Miss High Voltage Keep Away reads. It's none of your business. Her voice was even less confident. Okay, okay, I don't insist or anything. In fact, I was quite interested to find out what Eliza was reading. Moreover, I was quite amused to see a book in her hands. <coughs> TV, movies, or computer. If one were available here, all these things seemed to be much more appropriate entertainment for a girl like her. But she had a book instead. Now I'm gonna say don't try and take the book out of her hands. Hmm. Is there any? I mean, we're... What? We're rude to, like, Miku and, like, crap like that. I feel like being rude to her is not gonna help. Well, I mean, we're going for Elena, so... I don't want to get punched in the face. Okay. Not getting punched sounds good. Curiosity murdered the cat. Anyway, it's Eliza, and that means it could quickly turn into a total mess. Plus, I still have the ingredients to collect. Well, I'll come later. Eliza, yeah, you will. Eliza left the library quickly without looking at me. It got me thinking. What could this book be about if she was so ashamed of it? An ashamed Eliza is something extraordinary by itself. But Eliza? Ashamed about a book? Well, what's the point in guessing now? There's no way to find anything out. Holy Mobamba Deep's groan rang out, reaching each and every corner of the library. Robert. I passed by the bookshelves and beheld the perspiring librarian sitting near the trap door leading into the basement with a small sack next to her. Well, they might have some sort of a storehouse down there. Thanks. I took the sack and left the library. That was easy. <laughs> Thank goodness it wasn't too heavy, so I carried it down to Olga Dmitrievna's cabin without too much effort. <laughs> Let me yeah, get I wonder go. where we're gonna go next. I feel like I've visited the infirmary too often recently. But what can I do? That's how things pan out. I sighed and knocked on the door. Come in! The nurse said <laughs> with a trace of a sing-song accent. Good afternoon. Olga Dmitrievna has sent me to get some... I hesitated slightly. Yeast. Ah, uh, sure. She gave me a broad smile. It doesn't look like a broad smile. <laughs> it's just that I don't have any... Pioneer. <laughs> no hesitation. How so? She said that. Well, I had some, but now there's none left. I didn't even bother asking why she had in the first place. Well, don't you worry. 
You can have some aspirin, for example. <laughs> Don't drug me, lady. That could be of some use to me, actually. Where do I get it, then? <clears throat> Much better. I sighed. Take this. She opened the drawer and pulled out some kind of bottle. I took a closer look. Ostenkinsko was a well-known brand of cheap beer in the world. Okay, I'm not saying it again. It was beer. <laughs> What's the matter? Beer is also a fermented product. She gave me a deep gaze. Nobody will even notice. She had a point, but everything just looked so grotesque to me that I couldn't find anything to say. Are you sure? Absolutely. Okay, then. The bottle clearly wouldn't fit in the pocket of my shorts. Well, thanks. I mumbled, shy lie, leaving the infirmary, not sly lie. Well, beer certainly could replace yeast. Even my limited knowledge of chemistry and biology was enough to accept this. But... Generally, walking around with this bottle in my hands looked like a silly idea to me, so I decided to bring it to Olga Dmitrievna's cabin and hide it there. But I had to reach it somehow without anybody noticing the beer. I hid the bottle under my shirt. Ah. Uh. And everything would have been fine, but Slovia called out to me at the square. Actually, I ruin everything. I, I thought he was going to put it down his pants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, Slovia. funny. How's it going? Are you happy to see me? Are you happy to see me, Sonia? <laughs> you see my wallet? <laughs> Actually, she sprang out from behind me so suddenly that I even gave a start. I even gave a start. I've never heard that expression. How's it going? What exactly? I search for ingredients. Ah, so you know already. Yes, I do. Slovia smiled. It's going all right. I answered, <laughs> trying not to give away my unrest. And what do you have there? She pointed at the bottle sticking out from under my shirt. <laughs> ah, this. She got me. Uh, it's nothing. I blushed with a silly giggle. <laughs> <laughs> I... I gotta go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was almost running, leaving the square with the puzzled Slovia behind. It's great that she's one of those people who don't ask unnecessary questions. But there are people in this camp who like nothing better than to poke their noses into other people's business. Passing the Pioneer's Cabin, I stumbled upon Uliana. Fantastic, <coughs> wonderful. Why is she always in every scene? What are you hiding there? <laughs> She gave me one of her cheeky looks. I thought there was no point in denying anything, so I replied in a provocative manner. It's none of your business. I'm a cipher officer bearing a message to headquarters. That's certainly a big message. <laughs> I was carrying the bottle at waist height, so I was slightly embarrassed. Want some help? I'll deal with it on my own. I walked past her confidently and proceeded on my way. To my surprise, she didn't say anything, nor try to pursue me. There was nobody at all going to be in this cabin, so I steadily managed to dump the bottle under my bed while I yawned. Once I got outside, I sighed with relief. Really, I couldn't believe that I would ever worry that much about a single bottle of beer. Like I was back in high school. It's a good thing it's safe now. Even if somebody finds it, I'll claim that it's not mine. I could always think up of a suitable excuse for my enormous experience. Finally, it seems that everything had been collected. I took the handcart with sugar outside and put the sack with the flour in it, followed by the two baskets of strawberries that somehow fitted in between. And the beer was hidden under my shirt, just in case. The day was coming to its end, so I had to hurry, as cake itself will need some time to bake. Of course, okay. I... What? I, I just have to comment. I think that he hid it under his bed because we were supposed to go to the infirmary first, but now it's just really freaking stupid. He hid it under his bed, came aside. All oh, right, I need that. I have everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'd be kind of dumb. 
Of course, I'd rather enjoy lying down, closing my eyes and yawning more, closing my eyes and getting a decent sleep, but I just couldn't let Olga Dmitrievna down. Indeed, after all the trouble I'd gone to, I even felt personally responsible for the success of this event. Coming to the square, I stopped for a moment to catch my breath. It wasn't that the car it wasn't that the car that was heavy. It ran smoothly without any noticeable effort required. It was just that any physical exertion caused pain to me now. Both a physical and mental one. But okay, I'm going to bed. I sat down on the bench and closed my eyes for a moment. What's, What's that? that? I did it first, shut up. What's that? <laughs> I didn't really give a darn who it was. Probably just a fellow pioneer girl taking an interest in an unfamiliar companion in distress. What are you talking about? <laughs> I asked her tiredly. She didn't match the town. Those are the ingredients for a cake. Do you like cakes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. What, you never try cake? Yeah, you know. <laughs> Obviously, the girl didn't get what I was talking about, but it didn't surprise me at that moment. I really wasn't interested in the conversation. I was so tired that I had zero intention of classifying external distractions and tagging them as either common or uncommon. I see. Come down to canteen later and have a bite. Really? Really? Then what did they mean it? What? I asked indifferently. These cakes. Well, some flour, some sugar, various fillings. Beer. Now that's a strange question. Doesn't she know what cakes are made of? Do you have it all here? Yeah, sort of. And sugar? And sugar. Can you leave me a little? What for? I thought I was over the top. A sudden gust of wind made me grab the cart instinctively and open my eyes. However, nobody was there. Am I daydreaming? I noticed, though, that the sugar sack was untied and a small heap of it had poured out. Could it be that she was scared by the wind and ran away? Having fixed the sack, I got up <laughs> on the bench and continued on my challenging strawberry way. There wasn't a single person near the canteen. No wonder. Dinner was still an hour away. I brought the handcart to the rear exit and handed the foodstuffs to the camp cook. She must have been already told what to do with them, as she gave me such an unpleasant look. I'm not sure how long it takes to bake a cake, but it seems she had to hurry. I just wanted to relax for the remaining time up until dinner. In short, I was so tired that I just sat on the steps and waited. And slept on the steps, apparently. My eyes closed themselves. I guess I, I, guess I got so tired throughout the day that I'm yawning for the 19th time. That I didn't even notice how someone came up to me until they patted me on the shoulder. This is you, Zach. Oh, yeah. Hi! Miku was standing before me. Yeah? I didn't need a mirror to admit. imagine the expression of skepticism and annoyance on my face. Oh, excuse me. I must have interrupted you. No problem. I was just sitting here. Ah, all right then. Miku beamed with a smile. I was just coming to dinner and thought that it's time already, and then it appeared to me that it's too early. But I decided to ju to check just in case. Maybe it's not me who's mistaken, but the clock is. Well, not the clock. Clocks can't be mistaken. It's just that I misread it. She seemed to be ultimately confused now, and I and fell silent. It's still about a half an hour before dinner. Oh, that's great. Then I'll sit here and wait with you if, they, if you don't mind. Frankly speaking, I do mind. You know, I have some matters to attend to. I'm still flipping rude. <laughs> <laughs> Why not just flip and snatch the book or rude everyone else without a choice anyway? <laughs> I stood up quickly and left without saying goodbye, ignoring Miku as I always did while she screamed something after me. A minute later, I got to the square and sat on the bench with the firm intention of finding a quiet and safe place here to wait for dinner. I think this is the first time in the last four and a half days when I've felt like this. 
I wasn't just irritated because of some insignificant details, but indeed I was really angry. I've completely stopped caring about where I am and why I'm here. I don't care about how to get out either. What's driving me mad is that I always have to carry out some stupid task given by our camp leader, flipping Olga, and always it's me who gets into stupid situations. Sometimes it even ends up like that, looking like a clown. If all of this is some alien trick or a plot of the universal mind, they better consult with their psychiatrist. I gritted my teeth and clenched my teeth and... <clears throat> the most annoying thing is that everything that happens seems to happen by itself somehow. I'd be happier not having to carry around bags of sugar that weigh a ton, but I had no choice at all. I mean, any other option would lead to much worse consequences than a muscle strain or hurt pride. Uh, who are you angry with? Oliana was standing in front of me and smiled slyly. Nobody really. I answered absently, but my fists gave me away. Just like that. Okay, okay. It's up to you. You better tell me. Why did you run around the camp the whole day with some kind of bags? I had to. <laughs> I have to clear my throat if I want to even attempt her voice. <laughs> I have replied reluctantly. I have replied reluctantly. <laughs> yes, you did. I guess it was food. Maybe it was. Oliana was about to say something, but at the moment the bell rang, calling the pioneers for dinner. I sat in relief and quickly headed to the canteen, leaving Oliana behind. <laughs> Semyon, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. For what? What do you mean, for what? <laughs> How stupid are we? <laughs> the camp leader gave me a friendly smile. For the cakes, of course. Ah, sure. It was at that exact moment that I understood the true meaning of the saying, Keep your thanks to feed your cat. I've never heard What does that mean? I have no <laughs> idea. I'm so confused. <laughs> <laughs> You didn't tell anybody. What? <laughs> Keep your thanks to be fat. <laughs> what are you saying thank you after you feed the stupid cat? It doesn't make any sense. Okay. I'm so confused. Uh, you didn't tell anybody. This ought to be a surprise. Yeah. That's my boy. Okay. And now, up you go to dinner. Olga Dmitrievna waved her hand, pointing at the canteen. <clears throat> I stepped through the doorway slowly and started to look for a free place. It turned out that there were plenty today, so I got the chance to eat all alone. There was fish with mashed potatoes for dinner again. What misfortune once again. I'll be left half hungry. And didn't we have to... F didn't we have fish for lunch? <coughs> Is it today a fish-only day today? Today's Friday. <laughs> Having pushed my plate with the fried sea dweller away, I laid my head on my hand and closed my eyes. But soon, somebody came up to the table. Why does everybody keep doing that? Hey, are you alright? I'm just trying to get some shut-eye, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, it feels good to be a gangster. <laughs> 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 I replied without changing my position. Just tired? No shit. <laughs> <laughs> a real gangster type player plays See, I'm channeling the anchor from earlier, you see. Gosh, you really must be really tired. Slovia <laughs> said it seriously. Of course. That's like some of that bad translation. You remember that we were going for a hike after dinner, don't you? Have you prepared anything? What? Where? I opened my eyes and lifted my head up instantly. Lena was standing by Slovia. The hike! She was surprised. Didn't you know about the hike that we never mentioned to you once because you were too busy doing everything else? No, I didn't know what you were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I put my head down on the, at the table, on the table, and covered it with my hands. If only I could sink in this ground right away. The girls remained silent. I was left alone with my thoughts for some time, and that was fine by me. Maybe I could have sat there that went until the end of dinner, but the strong voice of Ulka Dmitrievna was heard from the opposite end of the canteen. 
guys. To celebrate the miraculous rescue of our friend and comrade, Sharik, we baked this cake for you all. I lifted my head idly and looked towards the camp leader, but couldn't see anything beyond the pioneer's backs. A second. Just a second. And nothing about me. Nothing about me rescuing Shriek or gathering the ingredients for the cake. <laughs> As if that's how it ought to be. Well, it would be wrong to expect anything else from our camp leader. Let's go. Or we won't get our share. Slovia smiled. Let's go. Lena agreed. Yeah, sure. <coughs> I got up reluctantly and tagged along behind the girls. As we approached the crowd of pioneers, Olga Dmitrievna was just putting the cake in the center of the table. And now? The camp leader wasn't able to finish as Lyanna rushed out from the pioneers. <laughs> God damn. What in the oh, world? Man, that middle one, though. Okay. <laughs> this is a fantastic <laughs> picture. This, just, <laughs> this is exactly what I want to see <laughs> in my <laughs> video game. <laughs> Didn't censor this picture. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong we with her. We still don't have eyes. What is wrong with her? This is us? I didn't even... Why is my hair brown <laughs> now? <laughs> oh. Why I is... mean, Lena's looking right at us, so that's a good thing. And what is wrong with her? She's, this entire picture sucks. <laughs> she's, she's just... <laughs> This character on an artist was having a bad day. <laughs> the background is the exact same background as the normal canteen. And then we just got our 2D freaking Microsoft Paint art style in the front. This is so <laughs> Whatever, man. We dived instead of dove into the into the cake. She managed to nibble it a few times before she was bowled away in a very sexual manner. Yeah. She was kicking and screaming as you would when being, you know, hit from behind. I stared blankly from the outside <laughs> at all this drama. Eliza smiling, Lena picked up some cream with her finger, all the furious pioneers around. I felt completely out of place here. I thought that if I close my eyes now and open them again, here I am, back to the safety of my apartment in front of a computer. Hey, it worked. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that blinked, but nothing changed, only the noise and the confusion became sharper. I can't wait until he loses his shit in two minutes. <laughs> That'd be funny. That'd be funny. Oh, Yana, that's the limit. I... I just... Well, in fact, behaving like this is a bit over the top, even for her. Shriek broke into the conversation, or is it a court-martial? Please don't go to Mitch Ravna. Since the cake is just by my turn, it's no big deal. He hesitated. It doesn't matter. The camp leader turned to Oliana. And you. Today, I'm going to punish you to the fullest extent, so you'll behave next time. Ah, whatever. She snorted and turned back. You won't be going on the hike with us tonight. Oh, what a punishment. As if I wanted to. I was more than willing to switch places with the Aliana and skip the hike instead of her, but who knew? If I had guessed beforehand, I'd have been the first one to go berserk and smash the darn cake. The darned cake. What do you want, buddy? Hmm? What do you want? Oh, I said, like, uh, I, I, I get that guy or whatever. 